Awesome. So uh, my name is Ellie. I'm the student director at the UW Food Pantry on the Seattle campus. Um, I've been at the position since August of 2023. And since I've been on, I've seen a tremendous growth. But I'll start with some basics and give you some all some history and uh, go from there. So the UW Food Pantry started in 2015 with an idea from um, some some groups up in the Division of Student Affairs. And um, there was a lot of talk about food insecurity at that time, just buzzing around campus. And then in 2016, a task force recommended the creation of the pantry. And so it just started with some pop-ups around campus at the hub and different areas on campus, just cans of uh, soup and tuna and maybe some cream of mushroom soup um, but they became really popular and lots of students were showing up for these pop-up pantries and that kind of indicated the need. And so then in 2018, we got a permanent home in Poplar Hall, which is on the west side of campus. And since then, it's been taking off. It's been really, really helpful to have a permanent home and offer a place of stability for students, faculty and staff. Um, in, a, in a place of reliability, so we all know where we can access food. So today, um, like I said, we're at Poplar Hall. We provide students, staff, and faculty with access to food at no cost to them. The only requirement is to show your Husky ID to proof of affiliation. Um, and this is really important as it's really low barrier for students to access food. This also mitigates social and academic impacts of campus food insecurity and reduces the stigma by providing welcoming, considerate, dignified experience. If any of you all have bopped into the food pantry, I think you can attest to this. We um, have a bunch of volunteers that welcome you with like warmth and um, familiarity. And um, often there's a recognition of just like recognizing fellow students that it might be in your classes or you pass along. The campus. Um, and so we provide um, high quality nutritious food to folks and we try to be really culturally appropriate and offer a di di diversity of food to cater to different cultural and dietary needs. So we are a pretty small team at the UW Food Pantry. There are five of us in total. Um, there's the staff director, Chris, um, who provides oversight and direction to the pantry and, and our staff. There's me providing leadership for pantry operations, day-to-day -day operations and serving as a liaison to campus and community partners. And then we have three different programs um, that are headed by Harmony Tinsley, the food drives coordinator, providing leadership for food drives and coordinating food drives across campus. I think some of y'all have participated in these food drives. Um, I know that the UW Combined Fund Drive hosted a uh, drive in the fall and it was really, really impactful. Um, and then we have the food recovery coordinator, Lily. And Lily provides supervision and helps coordinate volunteers and works with different um, retailers on and off campus to collect and recover um, pre-packaged, uh, ready to eat foods that might go to waste otherwise. And then new this year, we have uh, Maggie, who is our social media coordinator, and she creates content on, for social media and provides um, volunteers and daily operation support as well. It's been really impactful to help get the word out about different updates with the pantry, opportunities to get involved, and just provide um, on the spot, uh, up-to-date information for our visitors and volunteers and anybody interested in our service. So the pantry works really similar to like a grocery store. Again, the only requirement we have is just to show the your Husky ID. Um, and we have about 28 hours where we're open during this quarter. Um, that's up. We really try to make it uh, have as many open hours as possible to make it ex as accessible as possible to um, students, faculty, and staff that have different volunteers and are catering and juggling different needs. So when you walk into a pantry, um, it kind of looks like a grocery store, a really small grocery store, albeit, um, and you just grab a little cart and you kind of shop around 
um, getting pantry staples. We have fresh produce sometimes, ready to eat items. And again, this is all at no cost to uh, visitors. Once a visitor has their cart full, they'll check out with one of our volunteers. There we record um, the point allocation and weight totals. This helps us track um, visitor history and see trends over time. And we'll get into that in just a little minute here. Um, when I talk about points, I'm talking about, um, we allocate points to each item in the pantry. Um, so students, our individuals that come in can get up to eight points worth of food. And this uh, translates to roughly two to three days worth of supplemental food. And we have an increased amount of points that are allocated for um, parents and caregivers to help bolster and support their additional needs. So this quarter we have been averaging between 700 and 800 visitors every week. Um, our peak, uh, our, our top uh, visitor count to record actually occurred this winter. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had 828 visitors during a week, which was the most ever. Um, about 7% of our visitors are parents or caregivers. And then the majority of visitors are graduate students and undergraduate students. Roughly 40% are undergraduates, roughly 40% are graduate students, and then the rest of the 20% are PhD students, staff members, and faculty members. So here you can kind of see um, the trend over time from our inception. Um, again, it started out pretty low, and then you can see um, during last spring, spring of 2023, there is a little bit of a uptick. Um, and then in this, this past fall, we actually doubled the number of visitors we were serving from the previous fall. So the need has really, really increased um, over time. And there are a number of reasons that that could be happening. Um, but the, the moral of the story is we're here to support those who, who need our services. got some quotes here for from visitors on how the pantry helps. One visitor said that the pantry helps them feel more secure about moving to a new city to pursue grad school as the first in my family to ever pursue higher education. Knowing that there are campus resources that help that exist to help students in their day-to-day -day needs is so helpful. Another visitor said that the UW Food Pantry provides me a sense of comfort and security in knowing that if and when I am facing difficulties with food insecurity, I can go to them. And another visitor commented that I have been eating more balanced meals, haven't worried about food and focused on school and feel that my physical and mental well-being was positively impacted. I feel that with the pantry, I have more food available to make balanced meals. These are just a couple of ways that uh, the pantry helps students, faculty, and staff that are coming in to use this resource. So this is our total impact in 2023. Um, we served over 18,000 visitors, which was about a 60% increase from 2022. Um, over 110,000 pounds of food was distributed, again, up about 75% from the previous year. And this is all thanks to our combined 271 volunteers that really keep it going. And so um, there might be questions about where our food comes from. And uh, we get it from a variety of different places. Um, and there's gonna be places where you all can tap into to kind of help support our, our supply. Um, about 45% of our food is purchased through the Any Hungry Husky Fund, uh, about 20% from food drives, roughly 10% from gleaning. Individuals can come by and drop off food, and that accounts for about 12% of our um, supply. And then Northwest Harvest is a big uh, retail, or sorry, not retail, a big uh, warehouse that distributes to pantries and food banks across the state and they are excellent. They do a lot, a lot of work. Um, and then the two little slivers that are 
um, you can't see the little titles, are from the UW Farm and um, from Community Loaves, our community partner that donates freshly baked breads, bread and cookies. So there's, there's several ways to support our work and help take care of our fellow Huskies. Um, we have an Amazon wish list, and it's really, really easy to donate through that. Um, we've actually started doing online food drives through this to help um, get groups that can't necessarily host in-person food drives but want to help out. Um, so you can scan the QR code there, and it will take you right to our um, Amazon wish list, and it says all the high demand items. Magellan was talking about, um, you know, anything is great, of course, but we get particular requests from visitors for foods that might be really difficult to purchase or um, get in bulk, but are in high demand. And um, we throw those right on the wish list so that we can kind of cater to those needs. Another way to get involved is to host a food drive. Um, the contact for Harmony is right there, givefood at uw.edu. She will help coordinate um, getting bins, doing pickups or drop-offs for those bins, and kind of give you some marketing material if you are looking to host a food drive. Another way, like I said, about 12% of our food comes from individuals that just drop off food right to our pantry during any of our open hours. Um, and that's a really easy way as well. Oops, I didn't mean to open that. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Next slide here. Okay. Another way we can support the pantry is to donate to the Any Hungry Husky Fund. QR code is right there. I believe we're going to be doing another bigger fundraiser in uh, April coming up. But um, with about 44% of our food being sourced from purchasing, this fund really, really helps support our um, work and make sure that we get uh, plenty of food on, on the shelves for our visitors. And again, with the uptick in, in demand, um, this fund has become even more important to the sustainability of our work. And then another way, if you are a student or a retiree, is to volunteer with us. Um, volunteers really keep it going, um, helping stock the shelves, go out and collect food from our retailers, help pick up uh, food food drive bins, kind of run the gamut on, on how to help. Um, another way is to spread the word. Um, Following us on social media, we are up to date and provide lots of educational information on like recipes that you can do with our um, the food that you get in the pantry, as well as different opportunities around campus for where the food drives are, ways to get involved, if there is legislation or events that are happening. Um, it's a great resource to check out. And then finally, advocate is a, is a really important way. I mean, the pantry is here to support anybody that needs it, um, but there are deeper things at play here. Why why the pantry is getting such high demand, um, you know, it's really expensive to live. And there are some policies on the docket right now that could really improve access to, um, to supports like the pantry, to SNAP, et cetera. I listed a couple there, but if you're curious about other ways to support and get involved with advocacy, please feel free to reach out. And that's kind of, I'll wrap it up there. I think I went a little bit long, um, but happy to answer any questions. And I thank you all for being here. Yeah. Thank you, Ellie. Um, it looks like Melani, is that how you say your name, has a question? Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, I work with primary care. Do you guys either collaborate with or, um, I'm sorry, my brain, uh, like advertise with through Hall Health? That way more people, like, I guess, how do you advertise the pantry? Yeah, um, we, we get the word out in several ways. Um, we do have a lot of collaborations with RSOs on campus. We're also in some of these supplemental uh, materials that first years get. Um, we're working on getting some flyers out for 
like the digital flyers that you see like in buildings. And um, we have some volunteers that are working on creating those right now as well. Um, we also do a good amount of outreach, um, tabling at different events like the sustainability fair, the volunteer fair, um, other, other kinds of uh, events that are pop up on campus. And then we do uh, tours for classes and uh, presentations for classes for students um, enrolled in like nutrition and actually just different groups across campus as well. Great, thanks, Ellie. Does anybody else have a question before we move on to our next speaker? All right, well, um, thank you. So much great information. Um, uh, shocked and um, not shocked by the huge increase and um, super glad you're there um, and that the UW Seattle Montlake Food Pantry is taking care of business. Um, Heather Canning is the basic needs program manager at UW Bothell and Cascadia College. And I believe that you have had some program growth in the last year as well. So I'm very excited to hear about what's been going on in your neck of the woods. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Ellie, for talking about what's going on over on your campus. And so I can share a little bit more about what's going on over at UW Bothell. So little tech challenge. Let's see if I can share my screen. Screen. It's it. Oh, do you guys see it in full screen? I don't think so. I think so. Okay. Oh, oh. Present full screen. Oh, I got to hit the present. There we go. Okay, thank you. So... Thanks, Jolene, for the introduction. Again, I'm Heather Kenning. I'm the Basic Needs Program Manager here at UW Bothell, and I work in our Health and Wellness Resource Center, which is where our Husky Pantry is located, and it's part of our Department of Prevention, Health, and Wellness, which is a fairly new department on our UW Bothell campus, trying to connect some of the kind of non-academic student support services. And so the UW Husky Pantry may be accessed by any UW student who's facing food insecurity, whether it's a one-time need or if they're coming in every single week to pick up groceries. We see, you know, all sorts of need from students. And so I want to kind of complement Ellie's presentation with kind of the background about food insecurity in college students. And so our campus, along with Cascadia College, and I think UW Seattle, and a bunch of other colleges and universities across Washington State, um, participated in this big basic needs survey by Washington Student Achievement Council. And what we found from almost 10,000 students is about half of students on our campus are experiencing some sort of basic need insecurity. Four out of 10 students experience food insecurity, there's housing insecurity, homelessness, and food insecurity is kind of a weird technical term. So what that means is students were worried about that their food would run out. They cut meal sizes or skipped a meal in order to make their food last longer. They ate less than they felt like they should or were hungry and skipped a meal. Any of those all count as food insecurity. And the reason why it's so important and why we have things like the food pantries on our campus to support student hunger and student food insecurity is it really jeopardizes students' ability to succeed in school. Everybody's on this campus to further their education, you know, get a job, go support yourself. And students, like, imagine being hungry and sitting through class. We've all been there, but imagine that's every single day. So students who face basic needs and security are less likely to graduate. They're much more likely to fail a class and drop out of classes because they need to work more hours to make money, all sorts of different things. So it's really important 
way we can support our students in achieving their education goals is through food security programs. Um, looking just at our UW Bothell campus, in 2020, we did the NACHA survey, and we're working on launching that again this spring, which is very exciting. But one of the top stressors students reported is finances. College is expensive, life is expensive, and groceries are becoming more expensive. So this really, you know, the more we're studying, we're seeing this is pretty consistent. About half of students are in this position. And something I always like to point out is our state has a really great supplemental nutrition assistance program, basic food, food stamps, and it's not really accessible for students. They made policy exceptions during COVID that allowed a lot more students to participate and that ended last summer. So now students need to meet a lot of specific criterias, and generally that means working an average of 20 hours per week. And in case you didn't know, students who work on campus are limited to 19 and a half hours per week. So just throwing that out there. A lot of students we work with just don't end up eligible for SNAP or they receive like 10 or $20 a month. So food pantries are really a great way to support our students and support them where they are at, which is on, on our campus. And so what, you know, that work looks like over here at UW Bothell. So similarly, it started small as sort of a student-driven initiative out of our Student Diversity Center. And it was kind of like Ellie said, with their pop-up, a small real pantry where it had a couple of staples, granola bars, that sort of thing. They'd see a couple students a week. And then during COVID, when campus was shut down, that's when the Health and Wellness Resource Center took over the pantry as kind of a temporary basis as one of the few on-campus offices that were still um, student-facing, still seeing students during the shutdown. We had transitioned to curbside pickup so students could make a reservation and come pick up groceries. And then it became less temporary. And so now the Health and Wellness Resource Center, it's fully part of our programming. We've hired some new staff, me included. I started last fall as the basic needs program manager. And so the food pantry is one of my programs that I supervise. This year, for the first time, I got funding for some student staff. So I have some students in the office helping check students in and help shop. And that's great. And, you know, we're really hoping to keep expanding. Campus has been very supportive and there's lots of talk of finding us some new new space on campus so we can have, have more room as we're growing. And so here's some pictures. So last year, you know, it was just a couple of bookshelves in our office filled with food. And this year we've been able to kind of redesign the office a little bit, give it its own space so students don't feel like they're just in the middle of the Health and Wellness Resource Center, but they have a dedicated space for their food. We also were given this really great storage space on campus, which on the left there is my big Costco order at the beginning of the year. So we're able to actually do food drives and purchase in bulk and do some of those things that really help our sustainability with keeping, keeping students fed. And similar to Ellie, we have had crazy explosive growth. Um, since I started, we've doubled the number of students we serve every single quarter. So during academic year 21 through 22, we saw 181 students. And that's number of visits, not individual students. That's just the number of times people came into the pantry. And we've seen more than that number just in the first few weeks of this quarter. And so we are seeing crazy numbers. Last quarter, we saw 70 unique students and over 400 shopping trips. So we are growing. And then how do financial donations help? It really helps us purchase what is needed in the moment. We did a very successful food drive in winter quarter, and that helped us really stretch things further. And I still have cans of soup in my office, but I don't have 
any halal foods or any kosher foods. So getting those financial donations really help us provide flexibility to meet student need. Part of food security is not just access to food, but it's access to food that you can actually eat, whether that's cultural or if it's we realized some students didn't have can openers. So that's something we've started stocking in the food pantry. And on UW Bothell campus, there's a lot of limited options to get food while you're here. So we've tried to find a good balance between having, you know, rice and tofu and things you can go cook a nutritious meal, as well as microwave meals, granola bars, things that while you're on campus and you have class in an hour, you can get food that you need to actually be able to pay attention. We also have done some really cool holiday meal kits and different cultural events, things that are a good outreach opportunity for the Husky Pantry and helps reduce some of the food stigma of like we did a pizza kit one time and put together all the things you needed to make pizza and so that's one any college student could go oh that sounds fun I want to get a pizza and cook it with my friends and it's a good opportunity to get you know bodies in the door to see the food pantry and see all of the things we have to offer and so that's one way that financial donations are really helpful and what about food drives and donations? In the past, this is when I've always had to say like, they're great, but please give me money. This year, we're just having trouble getting food on the shelves. So food drives are fantastic. I've got storage space now, so I can actually do food drives. And so my answer now is absolutely. However you want to support the pantry, we are willing to work with you. And yeah, that is the end of my presentation, but I can stop sharing and answer any questions. All right. Thank you, Heather. Does mm -hmm. anyone have any questions specifically for Heather about the food pantry at UW Bothell? I know we have one question in chat. Um, Stan, it is important work and it's mind blowing. You're right that there's food insecurity among UW staff and students, but um, we are human beings and we are not immune to the um, shuffles and the, the things that are happening in the world. Um, we did have one question from Heidi. She wanted to know about what personal hygiene items or household products are requested most. Yeah, I would say on our campus, we are on the level above where the student rec center is. And mm -hmm. so students go downstairs, work out, and then they come up and they say, do you have any deodorant? Do you have body wash? So part of that is our proximity to the gym. <laughs> but also thinking about just what it takes for a student to be comfortable going yeah. to school. We go through a lot of laundry detergent. We usually do Tide Pods. Because if you don't smell good, if you haven't showered, if you haven't done laundry, you don't want to go to class because that's embarrassing. So mm -hmm. I would definitely say body wash, deodorant, and laundry are the three kind of yeah. personal care items we go through the most. What about you, Ellie? I would say for us, it's actually more diapers and feminine hygiene products. Mm -hmm. um, with about 7% of our visitors being parents and caregivers, we actually go through quite a few diapers. Um, and that's one thing that we've had to kind of scale back on purchasing to prioritize the food given our limited constraints. So definitely diapers of all sizes. I think I've noticed like size four and five tend to be the ones that go the fastest. Um, and feminine hygiene products, so tampons, pads of all different types are also ones that go really fast. Yeah, so for folks who um, have not heard this or heard me say that if you have not been to something where we posted a food drive or a food pantry event before, um, if you receive public assistance, if you receive SNAP or other benefits, food stamps only cover food. So even if somebody has food stamps, they can only buy food with them. So they can't buy laundry detergent, they can't buy body soap, they can't buy diapers, they can't buy deodorant, like any of the basic things that most of us don't think about, right? You're like, oh, I need some deodorant, I'm just going to swing by the store and get some. They can't use 
their uh, food stamps for that. So um, for me, one of the things that I do is I know where like all the kind of scratch and dent things are <laughs> at my my grocery stores. And so I'll go and I'll see like, oh, you know, like they're changing the packaging on, on this um, old spice deodorant, right? So there's like 10 deodorants here um, that are $1.25. So I would buy them and, and donate them. So that's, that's a little thing that you can do. Um, but that's something that I do. And um, let's see, we have another question. Uh, what do you have recommendations where students can go for help when they're already using the pantry, the food pantries, but it's not enough to address their food insecurity? Yeah, um, we, we see this a lot. We're getting this question like every day, honestly. Um, and what we do is we do have a list of resources that are uh, available in, in the area. Um, so other food banks that are in the area closest to us is the U District Food Bank. And they, um, anybody that is eligible to come into the um, UW Food Bank is also eligible for the U District Food Bank. We, we also have a list of the other ones that are in different neighborhoods um, around Seattle. Um, and we're working on compiling a list of other resources as well. It can be kind of specific to what the visitor is looking for, if it is just food or if it goes beyond that. Um, but it's something we're very cognizant about and, and working on trying to build out um, more resources and more accessible ways of getting that information. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, Heather and Ellie, but the intention behind the food pantry is to be a secondary source of food support not a primary source of food support. So yeah, what that's what I was gonna say is like, we don't wanna be, or we can't be their sole source of food. We see ourselves as like one piece of the puzzle for getting mm -hmm. food security. So if they can get, you know, a couple days worth of groceries from our food pantry, then that frees up that much money for them to buy the toilet paper and the things they can't yeah. with the food stamps. We similarly, we have a list of like the closest food resources. Bothell is kind of fun because it's still sort of a commuter college. So we have students all over the area. So we've got kind of the three that are like, hey, these are within a couple miles of campus. But depending on where you live, here's where you can find all of the food banks. We also have a new resource navigator who works out of the Health and Wellness Resource Center. So shout out to Melissa, she's on the call. Hi, Melissa. But it's great to have a person who can really help the student sit down and be like, okay, like, yeah, I have this list of food banks or something, but an actual person to help with that wayfinding and make those connections. So that's been awesome. We're excited to expand that. Um, let's go to Jen next. Hi, um, it's just really great to hear all the information shared. I work at Harborview Medical Center, and this has been something we talked about for a while. Uh, we see the need of the patients who come over here. A lot of them experience food insecurity. Um, I personally have never put such a program together from zero. Um, so I will probably reach out to all of you uh, for more information <laughs> um, down the road. Uh, one question I have in mind is that what do you do with the products that's almost expires? Um, do you utilize them in different ways, throw them out, or yeah, what what do you do with that? So um, at the UW Food Pantry, um, we adhere to pretty strict uh, guidance and regulation with EHS. Um, so anything that is expired past three months of the date. Um, we do not put out to visitors. Um, we try to re-donate what we can to other um, agencies in the in the area. Um, of course, every, every agency, every organization has its different um, guidance um, that, that has slightly different requirements on what they can take or what they cannot take. Um, so, you know, we do the best we can um, with that, but we also try to put a lot of uh, education out there for what we can take and making sure that what we can take is really clear to anybody that is looking to donate. All right, so we have a couple more questions in the chat. Um, 
Are there concerns with using university resources, staff time, et cetera, when hosting a UW food drive and are uh, hosting a food drive in a UW department? I can actually answer that. Um, it depends. <laughs> um, it could depend on your leadership, how engaged they are, if it's something they're interested in doing. Um, one of the things that if, you're, if your leadership is kind of pushing back, I would encourage you to do is um, partner with the UW Combined Fund Drive and the Food Pantry on that. So fun fact about the Combined Fund Drive is um, working on the Combined Fund Drive during your work hours is considered an official part of state business as a University of Washington employee. So um, if you partner with us under that guise, you still need to get approval from your supervisor and your manager but we can um, kind of help navigate that process with you. Um, we can also arrange pickups and drop-offs and all kinds of additional things if you just wanna focus on the food. Um, but certainly Ellie and Heather and at UW Tacoma, their, their team love to, have, love to have food drives and fund, fundraising drives and um, it makes a big difference. So. Um, <laughs> all right, and then um, Ellie, you have a question from Heidi. So along with the diaper need, what about baby food, formula, wipes, et cetera? Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, we, have, um, we have some guidance on which things are best. Um, if you circle back with me, I can send you some additional information on that. But yes, those items are also helpful. So those are, yeah, those are good. Those are good things. Those frequently, diapers will frequently wind up in the scratch and dent bin and the bigger sizes do always go first. Um, kids go through them faster, pull up. I don't know, for those of you who do not, you've seen my adult son walk behind me a couple of times. Um, when my kids were little, we went through pull ups like they were Kleenex. <laughs> and, and so like those things like that go really fast. And so they, um, they are a high value item. Um, and we have another question from Stan. This is a good one. This is a good discussion question. What do you think some of the ways to combat the stigma of going into the food pantry are? Or what are some of the ways you're aware of to make that seem less charged? Yeah, I love that question. That's something that I work on a lot. One thing we did last year was we partnered with some fieldwork students to make some social media content. And I basically was like, I am too far removed from this generation. You guys are your target audience. What works well? And so they made some cute TikToks. They did interviews with folks. And so we've been trying to leverage some of that as well this year. I also mentioned we have our first student staff working in the food pantry. And so I do a lot of training with them about really just customer service skills of every person that walks in the door, just greet them, welcome. Is it your first time in? Have you been in before? Do you have any questions? And just really making it like we used to get feedback. Students would walk into the health and wellness resource center and it kind of looks like you're walking into somebody's office and they're like, okay, this is weird. What am I doing here? So providing a little bit of guidance, like we put up some limit signs for items, not necessarily to be like, you can only take two of these, but it's, we get questions all the time of like, I don't know what's okay. Like I took two of these, is it fine? So providing enough information for students to feel comfortable, like they know what they're doing and then having that on site support as well. And I think as much peer to peer we can do is better. They, I would much rather them talk to a fellow student, a, my student staff utilizes the food pantry as well. And so they have personal experience to share. And so I think that really helps to make it not just it's for those people, but it's for everybody. What about you, Ellie? Yeah, I would definitely um, echo what Heather said there. Um, we're all, we're, we're student run actually. Um, so all of our staff are students as well. Um, and so, and then also we have between um, 50 and 70 volunteers in each week helping out and volunteers are all um, students as well for the most part with a couple of like retirees. Um, so 
but we do a lot on training um, volunteers on customer service as well. It really is like a very like welcoming environment and it really does kind of emulate the feel of like walking into a, albeit small grocery store. <laughs> um, you know, we often play music um, and we've been complimented um, over time on, on the warm atmosphere that we have created. Um, we're really, really friendly people and most of our volunteers or many of our volunteers also use the pantry and I'm pretty open about my experience with food insecurity throughout time as well so all of that and then the social media aspect and and tabling doing the outreach try to kind of get at the uh, stigma I think we've been pretty successful with reducing that yeah I have to say um as a team um my work group has volunteered uh both at the Husky Pantry and at the U District Food Bank. Um, and that warmth and that engagement, it makes such a difference. Um, people who are feeling food insecure are already feeling stressed, right? And they don't need any additional stigma. Um, they don't need any, like, any additional judgment. They just are there and they need food and we all need food, right? Like, doesn't matter who you are, what you what, what, like how you eat we all need to eat to live and so um you know i i like to do when i volunteered at the food bank i like to do check out and chat with people about their food like i have to tell you some of the most creative cooks i've ever encountered are folks in food banks who are like we have frozen quince jam and horseradish cheese <laughs> and like this is what i'm gonna do with it and it's so interesting because then clients are cross talking and you get to talk to them and it's 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 like being in a grocery store it's like regular shopping and that's exactly what it should be so i am super grateful that we have these resources on campus um i am so grateful ellie and heather that you were able to join us today to talk to this this group more about the programs that you're offering um for everybody who's on the call today, please check out their websites. Um, if you have questions about food insecurity or you're looking for a neighborhood food bank, please feel free to reach out to the UW Combined Fund Drive. I kind of have a quick and dirty list of uh, food banks in the greater Seattle area, because um, I'm in Seattle and the main campus is in Seattle, so I'm most familiar with that. But I do have some um, in Snohomish and Pierce County as well, because it is important. Everybody everybody deserves food and everybody deserves shelter i think those are non-negotiable and um a fundamental part of, of who we are for folks who want help with food drives or anything like that please feel free to reach out to ellie or heather or contact me or sebastian and we're happy to help you set that up food drives are a great way to engage and encourage your staff to come together um you know, I've been part of many. I've worked for the Combined Fund Drive directly now for about eight years. We've done a lot of food drives and we've had a lot of fun uh, doing different doing different things with our food drives. And so um, I also have a lot of ideas about ways you can engage your coworkers even more than having them bring in a can of food. So if nobody else has any questions, um, I think we will call it a day, Sebastian. We'll get this presentation up onto YouTube, probably. YouTube, yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> and you'll be, you'll be able to share it with your colleagues and your coworkers. And yeah, it's everybody deserves to eat, you know, bottom line. So thank you for taking the time today. I hope you all signed up to participate in Dare to Restore. We were thrilled to partner with the whole You on this program and bring so much um, so much really just money slash food to the food pantries because they need it. So thanks everybody. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Take care.